Terry Ruggles, Linda Wright Avery, Herb Clark with weather, and Hugh Gannon with Sports Extra. The Channel 10 News, live at 11. Good evening. The Delaware Valley is still in shock tonight over the death of television personality Jim O'Brien. He was killed today in a skydiving accident. Funeral arrangements are still incomplete. O'Brien was a popular weatherman and 5 o'clock anchorman for WPVI television. That's Channel 6. We have several reports on today's tragedy. First, here's Bill Baldini. Skydiving. That was Jim O'Brien's love. It was at this moment at Bet Stadium with a packed house on opening day that he was in his glory. A perfect landing, right on target. They're really tough. The winds are really honking. And the funny thing about it is, is you fight those winds to get right over the stadium. And then when you get in this cone of the stadium, the winds quit. This is where Jim O'Brien died today, in a lonely field. But he was doing what became a passion with him, skydiving. It was just a, a, an outright case of a, of a parachutist uh, getting entangled with another jumper's canopy. And he got entangled with the lines. And uh, they really were at too low an altitude to, to uh, affect emergency procedure of cutting away and using the reserve parachute. There were five skydivers in this plane. O'Brien and four other United Parachute Club members were free falling when Jim's accident happened. The four other jumpers with Jim O'Brien watched helplessly. They knew he was too low to use his reserve chute, but they were not sure he knew that. Jim Place watched in the air. He could even hear the two men talking as they were coming down. I could see tangled, entangled canopies, and I heard the one guy say, I'm going to cut away. Well, it turned out that was Jim. He's yelling, I'm going to cut away. The other person on the jump was yelling, no, ride it, meaning stay with your parachute. That's the best thing to do, given the position we're in. Why did he say it was the best thing to do at that time? They were too low. The other jumper, Doug Sellex, landed safely without injury. O'Brien's death here did not make other parachutists skip a beat. A new class took their first jump right on schedule just hours after the accident. Later, some of the parachutists who were with him on his last jump jumped again. Some said that's the way Jim would have wanted it. Parachuting was Jim O'Brien's favorite pastime, and today was his 814th jump. He loved the sport. He will be missed. Bill Baldini, Channel 10 News. And tonight, Jim O'Brien's colleagues found themselves in the rare and uncomfortable position of being part of a news story. I spent time with them tonight at a news conference where they opened their doors and their hearts to talk about the man they've known and worked with for more than 10 years. Everyone at WPBI-TV Channel 6 is devastated by the loss, the tragic loss of Jim O'Brien. He has been the lifeblood and the guts of Channel 6 and of Action News for more than a decade. More than that, he was the best friend many of us had. From general manager Larry Pollock to the staffers you never yeah, see on television, television Jim O'Brien was clearly more than just the weatherman on Channel 6. For co-anchor Jim Gardner, O'Brien was an admired colleague who became a unique friend over their years sure of working anything, together. Yeah. Gardner last saw yeah, O'Brien Friday, Friday night. night and says they left the station feeling particularly pleased with their 11 p.m. broadcast. We usually felt good about each other in the studio, but Friday night was one of those moments where we felt we rushed back and looked at the, that tape, which we don't do very frequently. And that happened numbers of times over the years, and when it did, that's a shared experience. And I guess uh, maybe it's silly to say, but I'm glad that that took place last Friday night. Channel 6 public and relations director I Art Moore was Jim's best personal he friend. Best. He would want to be remembered as someone who gave 100% all the time, every day, work or play, and Lord knows he did it. Sports director Don Tollefson credits O'Brien with teaching him the ropes in the broadcast business and much more. No matter what the weather, he makes me feel good. And that's what Jim did for all of us that worked with him. And I think he did that for an awful lot of people who watched him. And I just hope that in the sadness of this hour, uh, once we have recovered, we will continue to smile at the memory of how good Jim made us feel. O'Brien's intensity was legendary. He was determined to make everybody care as That's much as he uh, did. Before a newscast, he'd run around the room with his little weather stick and he'd go, I'm pumped, I'm pumped, I'm pumped, are you all pumped? You know, and you'd go down there and boy, the 
the crew down in the studio was always alive and looking and watching. When I would co-anchor with him, he was, I was so on because I was there with Jim O'Brien. Today, anchorwoman Chris Wagner had the painful job of announcing Jim's death, then completing a half-hour broadcast. I, I kept sticking my fingernails into my fingers during the break, going, come on, you can do it. I got through it. And he'd be proud of you. He would be proud of me. He'd give me a big hug, and he'd go. <laughs> That's what he always did when he thought something was good on the air. He'd go. <laughs> he would have. I love him. His colleagues say Jim O'Brien was intense, dedicated, a true professional, and a fearless individual. We agree, and tonight we share their sadness. Terry? Well, you know, the grief and the shock at WPVI is very understandable. However, it's not isolated because television personalizes people. It puts Jim O'Brien and the rest of us in your living room or your kitchen or your bedroom. In a sense, we become one-way relatives. And today, the shock of losing a person who's been a relative in the Delaware Valley for 13 years hit hard. Jim O'Brien died this what? morning. That's I'm sorry terrible. To hear that. He was in a parachute accident. His chute uh, got tangled up and his oh, reserve chute didn't open. What? That's the first I heard of it. Oh, wow. That's, that's not good. That's bad. He was the good guy who talked about the bad guys. Jim O'Brien. Born 43 years ago in Galveston, Texas, he never lost his down home approach, but turned it into part of his appeal. He was Jim O'Brien. He wasn't. Um, commercial like I mean, I mean he just did what he wanted to do O'Brien started his broadcasting career in radio in Waco Texas Philadelphians met him when he joined WFIL radio in 1970 that led to part-time work at Channel 6 weekend sports then it was dialing for dollars and then weather we have not heard of anybody going out and checking the fuzz on the caterpillars and starting to scream about the winter time on the way yet but I'm sure they will. Never we were a big fan of Jim O'Brien. He was, he was really very uh, fun to watch. He had a lot of flavor to his pen. As O'Brien's popularity continued to grow, so did his on-air responsibilities. New news, 5 o'clock news, and still continuing what many considered his forte, weather. He was always on television, and he shared much of his personal life with the audience. I knew he was in the thought of things like parachuting and motorcycle riding and a lot of things like that live on that side, you take your chances. Huh? Exactly. When the Phillies opened their season this year, O'Brien parachuted into Veterans Stadium. The public believed Jim O'Brien lived on the edge of danger. But today, they couldn't believe that lifestyle finally caught up with him. Gosh. I'm sorry to hear that. Really? Holy smokes. I'm, I'm, I'm really amazed. Well, it's hard to believe that it happened, but it's happened. And the people in the small broadcasting fraternity have lost a friend. But so has the entire Delaware Valley. Jim O'Brien was an adopted favorite son here, and as much a part of this town as soft pretzels and hoagies. Linda? There are many people here at Channel 10 who work with Jim O'Brien over the years, including, of course, Larry Kane, who has some personal reflections tonight. Larry? Well, eulogies are difficult, and especially now, but... Uh... Sometimes, as we all know, they gloss over reality. But in the case of Jim, Jim O'Brien, what you saw was what you got. He was the most real television person I've ever known. And he was, in a way, the most intense human being I've ever worked with, wanting every broadcast to be better than the last, insisting on perfection. He used to tell me that uh, he was just a poor boy from Texas who was trying to make a living. He believed in the work ethic and the American dream, and he never got tired. I never saw him tired. In fact, at one point in his career here, he did a morning radio program, a mid-morning TV program, and the 6 and 11 o'clock news for about two years. And when I'd say, Jim, you're pushing too hard, he'd, say, he'd laugh and say, Lar, I'm going for it. When we talked about the risk of skydiving and his other adventures, he'd say, life is a risk. He just believed in living every moment of life to its fullest. On a personal level, we worked seven years side by side, and I have to say that they were some of the happiest moments of my life. And he helped me and a lot of other people because he was so real. He helped to make me less inhibited and more natural. And I believe that it was that naturalness, that realness, that ability to talk to other people directly that made him so very, very good to watch. It's, it's kind of difficult to talk about Jim now, and there are a lot of memories, a lot of memories, but the most vivid remembrance of all, the times he took those terrible days, the bad news days that we all have, and made me smile. And he made thousands of people do the same thing. And, and I really believe that when in 30 days or three years, when the people of Philadelphia think 
about and remember Jim O'Brien, they'll smile. And that is the greatest legacy the man could leave behind. Terry? Thank you, Larry. Lynn and I will be back with the rest of today's news in just a moment.